Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So today we got some pretty good information on the upcoming Navi 23 GPUs. That would be the RX 6600 and 6600 XT. And the information that's come out, the new leaks, which seem pretty legit in my opinion, uh, actually point to some pretty interesting stuff. I think these GPUs are going to be significantly better than we were originally anticipating. And compared to their NVIDIA counterparts, the RTX 3060 in particular, I think AMD has a significant win on their hands here. So I think this is probably going to be the most interesting GPU of the RDNA 2 lineup as the gap between AMD and NVIDIA technologically will really be seen here. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today in this video. But first... Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in your creativity. Skillshare offers classes in a wide array of different talents. Things from arts and crafts, marketing, animation, design, illustration, lifestyle, photo and photography, which for me is a big one, uh, business, marketing, web design, pretty much anything that you'd like to learn from the comfort of your own home. As a YouTube creator, video editing is key, and learning from experts like Nikki Stevens here really helps bring up the quality of my videos so you guys have a more enjoyable experience. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And even better, right now, for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, we'll get a 30% off that annual premium subscription so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free Skillshare trial, you can still take advantage of this offer and get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. With the world the way it is, it's never been a better time to bolster your resume, enhance your skills, or go ahead and find new hobbies or do that thing that you've always wanted to do before. So once again, go ahead and click the links in the description below and start learning here today. Alrighty guys, so jumping on over here to videocards.com. They have a very detailed leak that they got. There's a lot of technical specs. They got their hands on basically everything you want to know about Navi 23. And honestly, Navi 23 or the RX 6600 series is looking to be very, very impressive. So I'm not going to go through the entire article. I will put a link in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. But we're going to go through this because there are some pretty big highlights in here that I think are very exciting. So first up, the Navi 23 die seems to be coming in at 235 millimeters squared. It's 35 millimeters by 35 millimeters package. This isn't anything out of the ordinary. This is basically the same size as like the RX 480, 580, that sort of GPU. So this is probably what we would consider the replacement for that. But being that the market's so crazy, it's also not going to be. But anyway, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, to me, that's about where I figured this would come in. Now, they're talking about this part right here. This GPU will come in various power brackets ranging from 90 watts to 65 watts. Once I saw that, I was like, whoa, that is way lower than I was anticipating. That's up for the notebook manufacturers. So that's right in line where you expect a laptop GPU to be because, well, they have like 65 and like 95 watt hour batteries. So yeah, they have to be reasonably power constrained to a certain degree. And as they mentioned right down here, that's obviously going to be with lower clock speeds than the desktop variants where they're going to see between 2350 megahertz and the rumored 2684 megahertz. So that's really fast right there. And well, that's usually how these things go. The lower your CU count is, the higher your clock speeds can typically get. So that's very interesting. Just to touch on the notebook side of things one more time, it's very clear that this chip is designed with laptops in mind. This is probably its main target and likely where most of the allocation is going to go. And realistically, this is going to be a huge win for AMD. As you'll see here in a minute, even the desktop variant compared to NVIDIA, this is a very power efficient chip. So you're going to get most of your performance in a 90 watt package and still a good chunk of it in a 65 watt package. So this is going to be probably game changer in the laptop sector. 
All right, so according to their documents, the leaks that they got, uh, technically Navi 23 can feature up to a maximum of 16 gigabytes of memory. That's not going to happen on the desktop side of things. It's not going to happen in the laptop side of things either. That's mostly going to be for like Radeon Pros and things like that. So there will eventually be like a professional card with 16 gigs of RAM. And this is coming in at a uh, 16 gigabit, which is the same across the entire Navi lineup. Nothing too crazy there. Realistically, we're going to see eight gigabyte cards here, guys. So that's what we were expecting. It's fine, you know, for a card at the these likely price points and this performance level. Now this part I didn't see coming. This was uh, kind of new information to me and that is the uh, 6600 series or Navi 23 will be on an eight times PCIe Gen 4 uh, bus width instead of using the standard 16 lanes that we're used to. And the reason for this I think is because uh, they're trying to get the power consumption as low as possible. And for a chip like this on PCIe Gen 4, eight lanes is going to be just fine. As they mentioned, it's the same as 16 lanes on PCA, uh, PCIe Gen 3. Now, if you're using PCIe Gen 3 boards and you're stuck with 8X, there's possibly going to be some penalty to that, but who knows? Uh, this chip might still be within that bracket where that's not going to be an issue. I know that the 2080 Ti kind of saw some degradation on PCIe 3 uh, 8X, but this isn't going to be as fast as a 2080 Ti. This is going to be around a 5700 XT, so it should be okay, uh, but it's really going to be pushing the limits. But if you have PCIe Gen 4, obviously that won't be a problem. All right, and at the bottom of the article, they have a nice little roundup graph here. So video cards basically compiles all their information. As you saw throughout this video, they have some very detailed leaks and documentation. And honestly, we're about a month away from these things being announced or released. I'm pretty sure this is pretty darn accurate at this point in time. So I, I would say that this is like 95% probably true here. So going through the specs, the full chip, the RX 6600 XT, the big Navi 23, it's going to be 32 CUs, which is 2048 uh, stream processors. You got 128 TMUs, 32 ROPs, 64 megabytes of infinity cache. Makes sense. You had 128, then it was cut down to 96, then 64. Ironically enough, Navi 24 is rumored to only have 16 megabytes instead of 32. Not really sure why that would be. Maybe just doesn't need it. But anyways, here you have the 64. It's right in line. Half of the big guys. And, well, you have less than half of the CUs. So maybe that's the reason why Navi24 doesn't need uh, the full-on 32. Anyways, we have uh, 2648 megahertz on the boost. This is the highest out of all of the boost clocks thus far. Now, that might be a little faster than they end up being. Uh, but regardless, I can't see it being any slower than the 6700 XT. We already went over the RAM, 8 gigabytes, 128-bit bus. Just makes sense at this point. Now, here's the big one, and that is the total board power, the TBP, coming in at 130 watts for the desktop variant. This is very interesting because we're expecting the 6600 XT to be about on par with the 5700 XT. That's what all the leaks are showing. Now, if we check out the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, which is probably going to be its main competitor, that comes in at 170 watts. Okay, so you're like, well, Chris, that's not that big of a difference. It's 40 watts. Well, that is a big difference, but regardless, we're expecting this at a 5700 XT level, which will be about 20% faster than the RTX 3060, while consuming about 25% less power. That means this little guy right here is going to be very, very power efficient. And that's part of the reason why I think they're just going with the PCIe uh, eight times lanes is to get that power consumption as low as possible. To put things even further in perspective, the RX 6600 coming in around 100 watts, that's the same as the GTX 1650 Super. This is going to be about as fast as an RX 5700 non-XT. That's a significant performance increase compared to what NVIDIA has in that particular power class. And considering the 3060 is consuming so much more power, 170 watts, and also needs to be cut down to 80, 90 watts to be in laptops, that's a much bigger cut 
than going from 130 watts down to 90 or 80 or whatever they decide to use, which means you're going to get much more of the full performance of Navi 23 compared to the NVIDIA counterpart. Okay, so now the big elephant in the room is the 2B determines, and that is the MSRP. So now I'm fairly certain how I, I've got this kind of figured out. Um, let's just look at the graph at where we are. So the 6700 XT, that's $480. We're missing a chip right here. That's kind of the only X factor. That would be the RX 6700 non-XT. Now, the reason why I don't think that chip exists is because it'd be about as fast as the RTX 3060 Ti. So my guess would be is that chip would need to be sold for $380 to compete with Nvidia. I think it'll be a little bit slower, so they'd have to charge just a little bit less. For AMD, that's about a 20% price reduction for the exact same chip. So I don't think AMD really wants to sell those unless they have a huge swath of defective chips and they're like, well, we want to make money off of those. Uh, I think yields are too good on the 6700 XT and the margins are too high. That's the reason why we don't have a 6700 non-XT. But anyways, if and when that chip comes out, my guess is $380 uh, MSRP. Now, like I said, the RX 6600 XT is probably going to be a 3060 competitor, and the 3060 comes in at $329. Now, this chip is going to be faster, about 20%, give or take, but it only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So, my guess is this is likely going to be $329 as well. AMD will pivot it as the faster card, but you get less VRAM. And honestly, I think that that's fine for them. I think that makes sense in the current world, in the current market. Would I like to see this at $250? Sure, but it's not going to happen. And then with this at $330, my guess would be the 6600, likely $280, making it the first GPU this generation to be sub $300. I know, that's insane. Um, $300 GPUs used to be like, high high mid-range or low high-end just a few generations ago. But now we're talking like entry level or, or mainstream cards. But $280 in today's market, MSRP makes sense. So you'd have 280 and then you have 330 that's a $50 jump. Then the 6700 at uh, 380 that's another $50 jump. Then you have a $100 jump to the 6700 XT. Then you have a $100 jump. You see where I'm going here? It makes sense and it lines up. And realistically, if NVIDIA does come out with something like a uh, RTX 3060 6 gigabyte or something, uh, the 6600 XT or the 6600 non XT is going to have more VRAM and likely going to just kill it on price because I, I don't think NVIDIA would sell for any less than $280. So I, I think that that makes sense, unfortunately, in this world. So pricing being kind of the negative here, I mean, honestly, they're going to be sold out anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it does show where kind of the new mainstream pricing is going to be. Almost $300 is kind of where GPUs start. And I, I just don't see that going away anytime soon. But let's talk about the positives here. The total board power being this low is ridiculous. This is a lot of horsepower and a lot better than I was anticipating. And you guys might be going, well, laptops, you know, that's cool, but that's not for me. Well, what about something like the uh, Intel NUC Phantom Canyon here? This is a pretty cool design. This is using an RTX 2060 uh, mobile chip inside of it, along with Tiger Lake. With Navi 23, system builders will have an even more powerful option in that power class. So for me, it's really interesting to see what people will use these chips for because of how power efficient they are. Nice little tiny little set box. Uh, you know, machines like this would be great being powered with something like a Ryzen 5800U plus, let's say, you know, the 6700 or 6600 XT. I think that would be really cool. And that just opens AMD up to a whole new category of devices out there that they're currently not in. Uh, Zotac makes their Z boxes. Obviously, Zotac works with NVIDIA, but those really have no competitors. Now, these chips will definitely be able to be put in small form factor machines like that or semi-custom builds or all sorts of really cool stuff out there. So I, I think that this is really going to be the chip that AMD just breaks away because their performance per watt advantage due to their 
at more advanced process node is really going to shine with these chips and really shows that if there is a Navi 24 coming, that's going to be even better than even I was anticipating. We're probably expecting, I'm thinking RX 580 and 570 level performance. Unfortunately, I think that those are also going to be way overpriced, probably right in line with what we got with the 5500 XT. Basically the same prices, possibly even higher. But regardless, they're going to draw very, very little power and be able to put in like super thin and light laptops. And like I said, even smaller devices, thin client sized machines with basically RX 580s in there, which is really, really impressive. And it's something Nvidia simply can't do. So for me, this, this looks like a giant win, if this is true. The power consumption thing, that's obviously something that they don't know for 100% sure, but it's looking really good. And unfortunately, like I said, that's a really good sign. The downside is going to be the price. The pricing that we used to see with like Polaris and Pascal, it's just never going to come back, guys. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. This is the new normal. And basically, entry level is now $200. If you guys didn't see the Technomics podcast this week, I will put a link in the description below. Paul and I talk about that a lot. These are the new normal prices for entry level and mainstream graphics cards moving forward. Both Nvidia and AMD are on board with it, but at least with AMD, you're getting significantly better performance than the RTX 20 or 3060 rather, which is basically the same speed as 2060. Um, significantly lower power consumption, if this is true. And like I said, price will be about the same. So overall, this is a much better piece of technology than the RTX 3060. So I'm pretty impressed. I'm interested to see if this is true. If it is, I might end up picking up one of these guys. You guys have heard me say it before. I'm not going to spend more than $300 on a graphics card. So something like the RX 6600, that's looking pretty solid in my opinion, especially with this really low power consumption here. I'll be able to squeeze that into a very small form factor PC and not have to worry about heat. So we might do a build on that here on the channel. But already, guys, I want to hear your thoughts on this. How, how do you feel about this type of information? Do you think I'm right on the pricing? Like I said, to me, it makes sense just looking at where things are. You know, you got to slot in that kind of missing card here uh, and see what their competition is. I think that I'm right, but I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, if you want to say like $2,500, that's probably going to be true for a minute. But crypto does seem to be going through a bit of a slump. Hopefully it dies off. We'll see. I think it's going to linger for a while, but... These cards obviously aren't going to be the best at mining. They don't need limiters. Uh, so basically, it's just going to be gamers that want these. Hopefully, AMD knows that. Hopefully, the reason why these took so long to come out, you know, is so that they can get supply halfway decent. We will have to wait and see. But once again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. And if you want to help me get an RX 6600 on hand, we do have Patreon in the description below. You get to talk to me directly, ask questions on the Techonomics podcast, and I really appreciate everybody who supports over there. But that's really all I have for you guys here today, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.